The Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Oscar Geiser from Unchained Convention. Well, it's a pleasure being here again in the late uh, night. And I'm Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. Moving on to issue one. Issue one, Bitcoin drops below $43,000 on El Salvador's first day using it. Just like the media wanted to, the price of Bitcoin fell by more than 10% on Tuesday, below the $4,300 mark. The drop comes after El Salvador made good on its plan announced in June and adopted the cryptocurrency as legal tender, making it the first country in the world to do so. They were rewarded with a 10% drop. The Central American nation had also bought 200 Bitcoins, buying 200 more late Monday and another 150 on Tuesday, bringing their public total to 550 Bitcoins. They're also giving residents $30 worth of Bitcoin. Oscar, your thoughts on Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador and the sudden price drop? The price drop, yeah, okay. That was, uh, from my perspective, it was fat at its best. And so, smells like someone didn't want to screw up to, to screw up Bukele's uh, walk in show. Um, uh, <laughs> but, but after all, it was a really small dip. I think Ben Kaufman posted or tweeted, is it a dip for ants? So um, yeah, in, in the big picture, it nearly looks quite unprofessional, designed and operated conspiracy. Um, I personally would have expected more. Yeah, something like a, a military approach or, or whatever like, but only like a 10 person price dip Poo. Yeah, and uh, that also gave Bukele like the chance to prove um, that he that he possibly owns diamond hands. So after all, I'm, I'm I'm really disappointed of the fiat regime, like the International Monetary Fund, like the the, <laughs> the Biden administration, and so on. Really bad entertainment. But possibly they they already spent all their resources on creating uh, and and spreading like. Uh, all that, all that COVID topic. So mm, maybe we can see first symptoms of uh, of a uh, fatigue. Yeah, yeah, like who knows? So, um, but after all, like 500, uh, 550 Bitcoin. Salvador owns five hundred fifty Bitcoin overall. Yeah, imagine like um, I was like I was uh, was reading like a tweet, a discussion on on Twitter, and there showed me like a a Bitcoin whale in Germany who owns round about like. He's not known in, in person, but he shall, uh, he, he shall own 300,000 Bitcoins. Yeah. And that also gives an idea of what happens with nation states. Yeah. Now they're happy to have 550. Yeah. It's a big issue. And even a 10 person drop now. <laughs> It did happen fast uh, when it went from a single person owning that kind of Bitcoin to a nation state, like you say. And and what a big difference, the guy with 300,000 compared to El Salvador's 550. Uh, but yeah, I agree. It was one of those uh, sell the news event. Somebody bought Bitcoin. They said, well, when it gets adopted as legal tender by El Salvador, that's when I'm going to sell. And they jumped right on it. They say, according to the the chart people, they look they think it might have been one person or one large whale that just decided this is it. I'm out. And yeah, I agree. Everyone in the Bitcoin space, including it seems the president of El Salvador, took it as a buying opportunity and went out there and got it. So I think it's a good day for El Salvador. It's exciting that all the people are getting thirty dollars in Bitcoin. It's neat to see them using the Lightning Network. I would second something I saw on Twitter. I think it was maybe Dan the Dark Pill or somebody like that who was giving the exchanges a hard time. And they said, what's wrong with you crypto exchanges? How has a country adopted the Lightning Network before you? And I don't even have to target one exchange at that because they all haven't. Coinbase, Kraken, uh, Bitfinex, I don't know, Bit. All the other ones, whatever the exchanges are, they haven't adopted Lightning. They're way far behind. I don't know why. I think it's a political thing, uh, but it's nice to see El Salvador. Uh, in closing, 
exit question, Oscar, which country will be next? We've also got uh, Panama, Ukraine right on deck. Uh, take your pick. Who's adopting Bitcoin next? No idea, but I think it will be also like a, a small country. And like Adam Beck tweeted, I think he, he tweeted about Georgia. That was uh, that was uh, that was his his idea. Uh, but yeah, I, I think like the train is starting, and we will see who 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 is smelling like the opportunity. And and about lightning, that is really like who that's really like great to see to see the pictures like from from the McDonald's or like from the Starbucks and how fast that implementation works if the people want to do so. Yeah, great. It was great to see the large corporations accepting it. So many times here in the US, we're told that, oh, we can't do that, or we're just part of the larger corporation. You'd have to talk to the manager's manager. Oh, well, apparently in El Salvador, they got things done. They got McDonald's and Starbucks and perhaps a variety of other major American chains to suddenly accept Bitcoin. Moving on to issue two, in the similar reign of Bitcoin legal tenders law, tender laws, a YouGov poll finds 27% support for making Bitcoin legal tender in the United States. Republicans show less support for recognizing Bitcoin as legal tender than Democrats, and baby boomers think it's a dreadful idea. It looks like it's falling down on generational lines. Oscar, what do you think about YouGov and the idea of Bitcoin legal tender in a major country like the United States or perhaps Germany, the UK, something like that? What do you think? We're still early. We're still early. Um, I think most people just advocate things they do expect any any benefit from. And, um, and I don't wonder about that little number of advocates that are that are like mentioned here. Um, in general, the awareness of the fiat, fiat problems um, is, is still too little in the Western countries. Um, I think, please take a look at which politic, politicians people voted into, into power in Western countries, for example. So, so, um, so we, we, we are still early. And, and after all, I think, of, co of course, YouGov is a, is a nice, is a nice, uh, is a nice project. But um, I keep it also that way, like, like Winston Churchill said, the only statistics you can trust on are the ones you have falsified yourself, something like that. Yeah, especially in these days. Yeah, but but like we're <laughs> we're on a good way. Like 27. Okay, if you compare it like maybe to to other societies, uh, it's little, but I think it's okay. Going with the classics and the Churchill quote there. Uh, I think it's an exciting idea for the United States or another developed nation to accept Bitcoin. But like everyone else has said before me, there's not that much of a problem. Credit is pretty available here in the United States. Banking is relatively available. And the currency, while it's fun for the Bitcoiners and everyone to get excited about inflation, and certainly it's true that there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. And, and there's an infinite amount, and that's quite a lot. So it's terrifying. But it has been relatively stable. If you get paid $100 in cash, you wait till the end of the month to spend it, you don't have any problems in the United States. Whereas in these developing nations, their currency goes up and down, Venezuela, El Salvador, places like that. You might actually be safer in Bitcoin and the appreciation value of Bitcoin uh, might knock you out. Some of the families that successfully hold on to their $30 in Bitcoin might do pretty well in the future especially in El Salvador. Exit question, Oscar, will the United States adopt Bitcoin as legal tender in the next five years? Yes or no? Of course I do. And uh, I was really thinking about there was there was a fake uh, tweet of, of Biden um, that that said like, <laughs> since we have to, <laughs> to, since we have to, to, um, to 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 act on on all the risks and 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 and, and this, this this policy like we also have to adopt Bitcoin and it was really like uh, I saw that I saw that 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 tweet uh, in, in in different Telegram channels and the people really discussed about it if it is true or not so it's not that unbelievable uh, we would have we 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 would have uh, thought about that like uh, years ago. Well, I want to join you on the overly optimistic train. 
but I'm afraid it would take a major crash for the United States to consider Bitcoin as legal tender. They'd have to be very desperate, looking for a way out and thinking maybe if they could stabilize the currency with something like Bitcoin, they could get their way out. But we're pretty solid for the next five years, so I'm going to say no. I'm going to disagree on that. Check out WCN Clips on YouTube. We've got 69 subscribers. <coughs> So you could subscribe too and join WCN Clips. Get all the clips from your favorite WCN shows now with cool thumbnails and short titles. Check out WCN Clips on YouTube and subscribe. It's free. It's free. Issue three, Ukraine has legalized Bitcoin. The Ukrainian parliament passed a law that legalizes and regulates Bitcoin in the country, providing official clarity on the asset, which was not previously clear. The main purpose behind the bill seems to seek clarification on the asset and protect those who own Bitcoin, as it was not previously legal or illegal in the country. Though not illegal, Ukrainian law enforcement agencies traded Bitcoin and other virtual currencies as a scam resulting in Bitcoin businesses getting raided. Now that this bill is passed, courts can properly protect individuals and businesses since it provides tax clarity and officially allows Bitcoin businesses to operate in this country. Thomas Hunt, what are your thoughts on Ukraine legalizing Bitcoin? Well, I think it's a great deal for the citizens of Ukraine and it's a contrast with Vladimir Putin's Russia, which is right next door and has also, like China and so many others, tried to make Bitcoin illegal. As all the Bitcoiners know, that fails every time and usually it just draws more attention to the Bitcoin. Uh, so Ukraine's going in the right direction here. They are perhaps aggravating their large neighbor to some degree, uh, allowing their citizens to traffic in Bitcoin this could spread to Russia. This could go over the border, cross-border transit of Bitcoin. So there is a risk there. Uh, it could be cited in future invasion documents. Uh, but for now, it's good for the people of Ukraine. It seems like a copycat. Like we could joke, oh, it's just like El Salvador. Who cares? But this is a country. This is a country uh, saying that Bitcoin is legal. It's a great step forward. It's great for all the potential businesses in Ukraine. And it's great for the people of Ukraine. Oscar, your thoughts on Ukraine legalizing Bitcoin. Well, totally agree with you. And it would be nice if it not would only like cross the border to the east, uh, that that behavior or that that development would also cross the border to the west. Yeah. Since like we need some competition like that uh, through the through the through the uh, regulators and uh, yeah, seeing seeing regulators acting this way. Like in general, it's a nice thing and something like a sweet, a sweet victory. For years, um, uh, it has been the regulator's strategy to to do not create to do not create legal security for dealing with crypto. And especially here in Germany, you can you can see that in in best practice about like um, um, uh, ATMs, like cash machines, and so on. So everything like is in the gray zone and we know we know it nowadays that it that this is like um uh, what they're aiming for and uh that several countries do break with this strategy not now it's like really like a, a result of a i think of a long and a hard work by our vital ecosystem and uh, that shows we are right on track um and uh, we have weared several regulators already down more to come and let's work on this way Exit question. If Bitcoin is successful in Ukraine and businesses and people flourish, will Vladimir Putin change his mind and allow Bitcoin in Russia? Thomas Hunt. I'm going to say no on this. Even if Bitcoin is successful in other places and even if it's wildly successful, we're talking a whole startup culture takes off in Ukraine, tons of Bitcoin businesses and action, the banks go out of business. Even then, Vladimir Putin, and I'm going to go ahead and throw China in there as well, will not legalize Bitcoin. They'll not go towards Bitcoin. They've been on this stage long enough. They know the importance of having control of your own currency, which is something that Bitcoin could take away from them. Anything that could take that away, they must avoid. And this goes for the United States as well. 
Oscar, your thoughts? Will Vladimir Putin accept Bitcoin if Ukraine is successful? For him and his willingness to pay the price to invade the country even more. Sorry, say again, we lost the beginning of that. Go ahead. No, no, no. I think, I think, uh, I think like it's, it's, it's uh, possibly it is a way that, that, that he is willing to pay a higher price for the invasion of Ukraine. Yeah, who knows? Could be. He'd have to pay in Bitcoin to take over the country if they do. Do you know, do you know how many Bitcoins the Ukrainian government owns so far? I do not know. Do you know? I don't, I don't know I, neither, uh, but the thing I know, they, they started very early to, 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 to shut businesses down, like from our friends here from Forklock, one of the biggest Russian speaking crypto media sites, and they confiscated also Bitcoins and Monero and so on. So they started collecting, holding coins from other people quite early. So I think they, they must have, they must have like, uh, they're, they're holding quite more than, than El Salvador is already doing. Well, let's hope they collected it and didn't burn it in a fire or run it over with a steamroller like they did in Malaysia, destroying those Bitcoin miners. Moving on to issue four. Issue four, El Salvador's new Bitcoin wallets could cost Western Union and similar countries $400 million a year. In 2020, El Salvador received nearly $6 billion in remittances, which accounted for about 23% of its gross domestic product. President Bukele estimates that money services providers like Western Union and MoneyGram will lose $400 million a year in commissions for remittances thanks to the country's Bitcoin adoption. Some 70% of the El Salvadorian population receives remittance patient payments oscar we talked about this a long time ago on the bitcoin group uh Amit andreas was always going on about the power and the importance of remittances yet another category of payments that most americans have no idea about what do you think about this story that a money gram and western union could lose 400 million dollars thanks to the bitcoin proposition like this is a catastrophe like the media is saying but but in fact, like it's a beautiful thing for the people since they are saving money, uh, uh, sending, sending uh, money from their hard work to other people. And uh, like, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and, uh, and I, I, I also think about like uh, the Bitcoin experience is, is the best driver of, of, uh, of, of, of that remittance like uh, uh, aspect. Uh, there are several like business cases who, who try to be on top um, on just like transferring Bitcoin or want to provide a, a, a layer solution for doing such services and it is not needed. Yeah? If, if the people are on board it, it is quite easy really to do so. and. Uh, and we don't need we don't need banks anymore. We don't need these 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 players that 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 are remittance cartels anymore. Yeah, that is the message. But it's also quite interesting, like that that the media is is also only like like writing from the perspective of of that of of, of the big um, industry players, like and that they that they that they that they like say it's. It, it's a catastrophe like people are losing money no the opposite is the case yeah freedom of transaction has returned to these people well i've i've been mean to western union for a long time and i think a lot of bitcoiners have as well and i've also offered constructive criticism to them on many occasions and i will continue to do so there's still hope for you western union most of your stores you could probably replace with a series of Bitcoin ATMs with better instructions and manuals and things than the current ATMs. Maybe hire some people to stand next to the ATMs, teach people how to use them. Some of your stores, you might still need that window with the cash and all that kind of thing. But in general, if Western Union, MoneyGram, any of the competitors can take this idea, convert it to a Bitcoin, and now we'll just adopt the new language, a lightning network solution, they could send payments for cheap. They could probably still take a few pennies off the people with the machine and they could survive 
as a business. And th maybe this isn't important to you, Western Union. I know you're as old as telegrams and telegraphs, so maybe you don't care. But I really thought right up until the very end that Netflix could have used a blockbuster, that Netflix could have bought them and you could have returned your videos there. You could have browsed for videos. They could have sold you stuff physically. And we even now see the, this happening with Amazon where they're going backwards and they're buying malls. They're using the malls for distribution centers, but Amazon is also building physical real world stores uh, to sell you sodas and things. They've built bookstores where they're selling you used bookstores. So there is a need for what you have, Western Union. You have property all over the world, much like McDonald's or Blockbuster or anyone else. And this property can be used to distribute Bitcoin. If you don't do this, every small business all over the world is going to put a Bitcoin ATM machine in their store. They're going to get the couple of pennies. They're going to get your cut. And you're going to go out of business like Blockbuster. And we're going to be buying Western Union signs at uh, closeout auctions. And all the Bitcoiners are going to be wearing yellow Western Union shirts as a joke. And they're going to be dragging around like a carcass behind our Teslas the name of your good business that's delivered telegrams and telegraphs and money all over the world for 100 years, probably more, unless you change. Oscar, exit question. Uh, what do you think about uh, MoneyGram, Western Union? Will they last three years, five years, forever? Quite difficult to quite difficult to to um, um, to, to estimate. I've never used these services, but I can see, like on on German streets, uh, it's uh, uh, there. There are long queues. Um, at, at the stores, I haven't seen these long queues before during years. And uh, at the moment, there's really like a demand for these services. But uh, but if you have a wallet, if you see how easy that, that works, I think it, it can be an exponential uh, function that, that, that takes away their customers. It's definitely going to wipe them out unless they change. I still think there's hope for them. They have a lot of staff. They have a lot of vague, like locations, but we've seen other stores like Blockbuster, Kmart, uh, all kinds of other major retailers who once dominated the US and even the world completely disappear because of technological changes that they were not prepared for. Moving on to issue five. Issue five, Biden's SEC is ready to regulate cryptocurrency. Coinbase has gotten the government's attention. Coinbase is attempting to launch a new product called Lend, where they would pay you for providing liquidity for their market, and other people could then borrow that liquidity to bet on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Coinbase was doing the right thing. They were filling out all the forms and signing up to be a traditional and proper business. That's where the SEC stepped in, using the same evidence that Coinbase had been submitting to try to get their license and do everything properly. The SEC stepped in saying that the Lend product would be considered to be a security through the decades old Howie and Reeves court case, considering that the Lend would be a security and thus regulated by the SEC. Uh, more broadly, the article claims that this should be seen as a shot across the bow and that the Biden administration is intending to regulate cryptocurrency, perhaps cryptocurrency exchanges, and maybe more. Oscar, your thoughts on Coinbase getting in trouble for creating a lending product? No, first, uh, let's start with a, with another question. You you said or you read uh, Coinbase was doing the right thing. My question is, did they really do the right thing asking the SEC for permission? I think this is the main question. Uh, that, of course, was my, that Coinbase thing was my favorite topic of the week. Um, I got through that, through, uh, on, on that, through a, through a retweet from, from Eric Forhees. And, uh, yeah. What the U.S. administration, the SEC is doing, from my perspective, is like like a mother abusing her own child. Yeah, this is what happens if you choose a business model uh, that has to serve the interests of the regulators of the fiat regime, 
like being a conference host, I've seen so many business models and, and startups acting this way and, and failing this way. And um, my idea is like the clear message um, to everyone can only be don't ask regulators for permission. Don't do that. Choose an approach Satoshi would have chosen, like setting up a decentralized exchange or, or, or. Um, he didn't ask uh, the SEC for permission to create Bitcoin either. Uh, so don't comply that way. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is the best case learning. And uh, thanks Coinbase for, for, for making it that transparent. Well, I want to start off by once again reminding everyone that Coinbase is on a quest to steal everyone's business model, right? First it was trading, then it was altcoins like Cripsy, then it was fancy trading, uh, then it was just, they just keep going. They're stealing everyone's business model. They finally come back to the startup that I worked for in San Francisco, BTC Jam. We were lending out Bitcoin years ago. So that was our idea. You're stealing our idea. You're no good at it either. Uh, I agree with what Oscar is saying. Coinbase might have made a mistake here by going the regulatory way. But again, this was our, they're our regulatory example, right? They're already on the rails of regulation and they're on the rails of wanting to be a monopoly, wanting to have those regulations rise up, protect them from other competitors and give them access to the market so they can slowly jack up their fees making all of their investors happy, right? They're already our example on that path. And it is interesting that to see them hit such a roadblock and then to react to the roadblock in the way they did. Brian Armstrong claims he's not political, claims you can't discuss politics at Coinbase, especially when it comes to race and even fired employees who wanted to continue discussing politics. Now, suddenly when the company's product's in trouble, he goes full politics. He's out on Twitter attacking the Biden administration, saying they're going too far, asking for the community's help to save them. And what a what a bad position they find themselves in. I just want to contrast that with CZ and Binance, who I think is taking what Oscar would consider more a, a direct uh, approach, more of an independent approach. Uh, they were in Malta. Malta was going to regulate them. They moved to Estonia. They might even still be in Malta. I don't know where they are. I don't even think they're in a single country right now. They're claiming a stateless organization. But if Binance wanted to launch this Lend product and they probably have something similar or are working on it now, they wouldn't go through regulators. They would see if it was technically possible. If they can get the software to work, if they can get the spreadsheets to work and the numbers work out, they're gonna make money, they would do it. And it's a big difference between the way Coinbase operates, and it must be incredibly frustrating to Brian Armstrong, who was so early to this you know, regulation idea, so early to this exchange idea, at any point he could have said, enough, I'm done with the US, and he could have went the Binance way, but he didn't, and now he's trapped, and they just keep pulling him down, but he's on the stock market, but they're pulling him down. Oscar, exit question. Do you think that Coinbase will launch their Len product anyway, taking on the fees, taking on the legal case, or will they give up and not offer the Lend product? For markets, but I guess, or I, I, I think there are players who don't have these regulations given. And so even if Coinbase will start to implement kind of business that, that, that can be like titled as, as decentralized finance. Uh, uh, there's no way for like for, for real competition. And uh, so, so I don't think they have a chance like to, to succeed in that, in that market at the moment here. Yeah? But it's also a question of um, how much violence is, is the regulator um, accepting to, 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 to shut decentralized finance products down? Yeah, since like, yeah, that's right what you said about Binance, but like they are also feeling, I think, the pressure or the, 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 the heat, the heat of, of, of the regulation. Um, and yeah, and we still have to see how, how like, exciting projects like hodl hodl blue wallet etc like are are, are um, evolving yeah since like uh, 
most of, of these decentralized exchanges like the, the user experience is still poor or it's, it's, it's really like a techie thing. And uh, yeah, and it, like, I think this, this, this case should like motivate these players like to work harder since that is really like a unique selling proposition yeah, to them, not to go in bed with regulators. Uh, I think Coinbase goes against the grain here. I think they launched the program anyway. They get sued. They fight it in court and they believe that they will win. I don't think they would have gone with this public political approach if it was the other decision, if they were going to try to walk away. I think that they probably feel they're in an existential battle against Binance, that it's all or nothing. They get this Lend program, they get margin happening on Coinbase, they get all the coins on Coinbase, they copy everything that Binance does, even BTC Jam from four years ago, and they go forward with it. So it could be pretty exciting here. Uh, Oscar might be surprised to see Brian Armstrong out there with the pirate hat on going around doing this. But again, it, it could get stranger. Jack Dorsey from Twitter could ask for the community's help to write an open API uh, any minute now, just like the Twitter API that he used to have before he closed it down and shut down all the programs. So once again, open source all the way. Never trust these people. Moving on to issue six. Blockstream to partner with Australia's Macquarie for green Bitcoin mining. Blockstream Mining, the blockchain firm, said on Thursday it would partner with Macquarie Group to develop mining facilities that use renewable energy. Bitcoin is the world's biggest cryptocurrency. As cryptocurrencies gain more popularity, there's more environmental impact. Blockstream is seeking to counter this by creating Bitcoin mining facilities that use reusable energy the first project will be based in north america that's a big continent could be anywhere oscar your thoughts on blockstream moving into mining and specifically renewable environmentally friendly bitcoin mining Whew. Uh, talking about that green washing that green green uh, that strategy like to, to sell yourself with, with, with green engagements. Like I'm being tired being a German hearing about this. Yeah, everyone is screaming for it, especially also the European banks and, and our regulators. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's nice public relation work, I think for status. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if we, the Bitcoin community do really need this kind of engagement and marketing PR, but uh, it is fun to see shooting back on regulators and and and, and fat media topics with their own weapons. Yeah, and uh, 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 I don't have all detailed um, information like to 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 really say to, to go into details here. But that is my first impression. Well, I'll agree with you a little bit. I do think that if if dirtier is faster and cheaper somebody's going to go with dirtier and they're going to undercut these guys. There is a possibility with renewable that some sources could just be better, like the way that a hydroelectric plant keeps going even when their batteries are full. At that point, they could switch on the Bitcoin miners, get energy that's not being used, put it into mining. That'd be good. The way that the sun's always on, the wind's always on, things like this. Of course, sun's off at night. But uh, that kind of thing could work. Of course, we have to acknowledge the German irony that Germany shut down their nuclear plants uh, for the good of the environment, but ended up burning more coal, bad for the environment. So it's a bit difficult to see how these propositions are gonna actually turn out. I think it's it's good for the community that Blockstream is making their own ASICs. Blockstream's a very smart company. Maybe they can make better ASICs, but I do think we need to keep an eye on them. There's a potential vertically integrated monopoly here where Blockstream has their own second layer with liquid. They have their own ASICs. They have their own mining facilities. Uh, it's, uh, there was always that conspiracy by the B-cashers and the other people during the fork and the split and all the scaling drama that Blockstream was a secret evil conspiracy. Uh, but let's not forget that if they move towards vertical integration, although I think it, right now it's just too small. There's too many other miners and the same thing for the renewables. There's too many other miners. There's too many other people that are going to do it any way they can, faster, dirtier, cheaper. 
it doesn't matter. Exit question, Oscar, will Bitcoin mining go green? Will the most of Bitcoin mining be green in three to five years? Could be, could be. I also, I also read the, the, the articles, like I said, who, who, who wrote that, who wrote that one that, 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 uh, that Bitcoin goes like also for, for especially like for, for hidden energies and lost energies and so on. Was it Gladstein? I, I don't know exactly, but, uh, but that, that, that sounds quite, quite uh, logical for me or to me. And uh, of course, I think like Bitcoiners are some of the smartest and, and most innovative brains. And we are like, um, I think the core community is really like uh, from a, from a, from a sustain, has a sustainable perspective. That is, what, that is why we are in Bitcoin. And that totally corresponds uh, with the approach like to, to choose the best sources of energy like to run our network and uh, for that reason like i'm quite optimistic that 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 we will that we will find the best ways given to 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 run the network a lot of the times we all just say that the problems with bitcoin are fud and they're fake or whatever but if you look at the scaling debate scaling was a problem we had a debate and we solved it I think everybody kind of agreed anonymity was the next problem to solve, but it's looking like because of media pressure, maybe we'll also have to solve the energy problem as well. I agree with Oscar. I think we can continue to mine Bitcoin using cheaper energy, using more renewable energy, but at the same time, everyone's going to keep mining it anyway. It's like the goose that lays golden eggs. Everyone in every country is going to want one and they're all going to wire them up to whatever power system they have, whether it's coal or nuclear or anything, right? They're just going to burn that energy. Uh, similar to the larger environmental debate and the larger problem of China and, inner, and India being developing nations using a lot of energy, building inexpensive cars and things that pollute more. The same thing for Bitcoin mining. The same countries, the same imbalance between many countries will naturally lead to these countries doing dirty and cheap mining. Uh, the question is if there's a subsidy or something that goes in and pays them to do better or protects the industry in some way. I don't think we'll go as far as software to say whether the Bitcoins are green and clean or not, uh, but I'm not, I'm not saying that won't happen. <laughs> so we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, I think that's it. We made it through all the issues. Uh, everyone check out the WCN Clips channel. You can subscribe to WCN Clips on YouTube. Just Google WCN Clips. Uh, we're going to go to predictions or story of the week. Oscar, are you ready with a prediction or a story of the week? I take whatever you choose. Uh, you have to say something. So is there anything going on uh, in your life? I know you're working on a nightclub. Is it open? Do you have any we have events going we have on? That. We have opened uh, that one month ago, but in fact, like we are, we are, we are like we are like deputies now, so we have to check like the personal ideas of the people and so on. So that's quite really tough. That is also the reason why we postponed our conference this year because we we think it it cannot correspond with the philosophy of like of of a Bitcoin event that people go anonymous to to a place and and so on and so on and so on. So yeah, tough times, yeah. But uh, but everything is okay, yeah. I think like we 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 have we have started like to to hold her and don't trust the government about like uh, or being independent, being fr from an economical perspective, being independent. And and now we have to we have to convert that whole ment mentality like on on other aspects of life and, and, and socialization, yeah, and doing business. And uh, yeah, we have, to, we have to keep a long breath. But if, if we can't do so, we as being like holders, like who else should do? Well, for, for me, this week has just been all about Curio cards. As you guys know, Curio cards are going to be sold by Christie's Auction House on October 1st. So everybody in the community is really exciting, excited about it. They've been putting out some great tweets. I put out a fun video yesterday that I edited together from the Hugh Grant movie, Mickey Blue Eyes, fun movie. And uh, I, I went ahead and I thought about that classic quote from Heist. And I said, well, what would someone smarter than me do? And I made an NFT 
of the video that I made to advertise the NFTs that I made four years ago. So how fun is that? You could buy the NFT. I think it's like 500 bucks. You would own it. You could probably do what everyone else does. Turn around, list it for a thousand bucks. See if it sells. I don't know. I'm also putting out some photography NFTs. I'm having a good time with that. A lot of these are on my OpenSea account, OpenSea slash mad bitcoins, something like that. And I've also put out some NFTs this week on Rare Toshi. That's the Bitcoin NFT platform that's run using Liquid Bitcoin, again, Blockstream. But it's a great little platform. They allowed me on there and I'm selling some uh, mad biddies. Uh, there's this great project in there called Biddies. You should go buy the Biddies. They're fantastic. They're little pixel art of uh, Satoshi, pixel art of uh, Wei Dai or Adam Back or David Chom, a bunch of early Bitcoiners. And I was like, wow, those are so Biddies cool. Biddies is the name of that project. It's called uh, Rare Toshi. Might be able to bring it up here, uh, but I really want to show the hashtag Biddies because these were just so cool. Um, so I, I went out and, you know, I tried to bid on them and get some, uh, search engine is less than satisfactory. Uh, it's bringing me up everything. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, it's one way to go. Okay, here we go. I scrolled down forever. It's a very new platform. We all need to give them time to grow. Uh, but these are the biddies and these are on the liquid network. So they're similar to Bitcoin. They're on Bitcoin. It's a side chain or a second layer of Bitcoin. And I just thought these were so cool, uh, but that they were missing something. So I went ahead and made them into the mad biddies here. Uh, you can see some of the mad biddies yeah. and uh, oh. I just thought they're fun. And I, I wanted to bring attention to rare Toshi and I want to bring attention to the other artists on there. So I sold these for, I forgot something like a hundred bucks a piece and somebody bought a couple of them and they're trying to list them for a hundred K. So I don't know how that's going to go, but Check out Rare Toshi. It's a great little NFT platform uh, for Bitcoin, and they have a lot of Bitcoin art on there. You can get your Bitcoin avatars. Uh, this really nice one. It's like a citadel on the back of a space whale. Uh, reminds me of a Doctor Who episode. Uh, but yeah, check out Rare Toshi from the guys at Blockstream. Not a plug. I'm not paid to say that, uh, but I think it's cool. And they let me on there to make some art. I thought that was fun. I also am trying to sell some of my pictures on there. Uh, of early Bitcoin uh, stuff that I have and early Bitcoin things. Let me see if I can find one of those uh, in the big scroll. And again, I you know you can buy these if you want. They're NFTs. I think they're fun. Uh, but here, here's one of them. You can see on the right there, Mad Bitcoin's Lego art. Um, pretty cool. Someone made a Lego art of me back in the day, and I took a picture in 2014. Here you can see me wearing my first Bitcoin hat in 2014. Uh, the original mad bitcoins concept art a picture of my first bitcoin hat i don't know i think photography nfts are the next big thing but we'll have to see how that goes and in general i'm just super excited about curio cards the whole nft community people collecting things uh, people that like art people that want to buy art and flip art it's great either way it's super fun and i'm looking forward to christie's oscar i think that's about it anything else you want to say in closing it's your audio stops right away, but it, then it goes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it was a pleasure. Like, like every time, I will just take a rush into rare, rare toshis. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. Like to, especially to have a look for the mad biddies. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's. But that is, of course, that is incredible. Like I, I also I, I, I bought like a like a, a collection of cards. I think in the middle or at the beginning of the year from from Theo Theo Goodman's auction and it's unbelievable what it is worth now I think one, one of these cards like went 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 on open sea like I just spent it some bucks like but now for 15 ether and like the community is saying you have to unbelievable yeah but uh, like to convert to convert it like that you can put it like on open sea or something like that i really have to spend like two to three full-time days yeah to get really like in, in inside it so we are still early even with nfts we are still early <laughs> but it's exciting of course and and the nfts yeah like people around me like talking about nfts they don't own any bitcoin yeah but they started with like with their with their with their basketball cards and so on and that is also like a not 
we should not underestimate the power of that and nfts also as driving forces for also for our purpose yeah yeah well, and, and shout out to theo goodman theo was incredibly early on rare pepes he told us all about it uh i thought there was they were cool but i didn't buy any i didn't i didn't really listen it's just like bitcoin everyone tells you about it but you didn't buy any now you're like gosh i wish i bought that bitcoin uh same thing with the rare pepes they're doing great now and it's just been fantastic to see the way the at first i wasn't sure nfts were real because i thought it was just people buying their own projects and pumping them but then as it got out there and it got all the way to curio cards to rare pepe to spells of genesis all the old projects that I always liked are being appreciated now by these new NFT collectors. And I'm more and more, I'm like, NFTs are real. That means, and then it goes crazy. It's all concert tickets and collectibles and all kinds of fantastic things that will be made in the future. Uh, access tokens, everything that NFTs can be. So uh, we, we don't usually talk about altcoins here or whatever, but they're also on Bitcoin now. They're on Rare Toshi, they're liquid. Uh, so. It's there for everybody now. You don't have to be platform specific, but I think it's super fun that artists can make money and that NFTs exist. And with that, I think we're going to end the show. So until next time, <laughs> bye, 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 bye. <laughs>